Hello. My name is Fernando Gotino. And the organizers have been kind enough to ask me to chair this session, which I hope will be as fruitful as the previous ones. Our first speaker is Jorge Sanz. He's going to ta talk about uh, collaboration in open source software. Jorge Sanz is well known in the GVZIG world. He's a member of the foundation and he was recently appointed as a member in the board of directors. He's a cartographer by, by trade. Hello, and thank you for being here. It's a bit late. Um, I suppose we're all tired. What am I going to talk about? Well, first of all, I'm going to tell you about the OS Geo Foundation. I don't know if you're all familiar with it. I will talk about the incubator process, what it is about, and the evolution of TV SIG for the past six years of incubation. I will talk about other collaboration projects between the foundation and the project. OK, what is OS Geo? It is a foundation for geospatial open source software. It was set up in February 2006 as a way of pulling together efforts at the time by Bio Network and other bodies. It is based in Delaware, which was a very advantageous location for a foundation. It was very easy to set a foundation there, but it is a global foundation where all over the planet, all over the world. As for its structure and operation, I don't know if you heard about Apache, the foundation. Well, we are very similar to Apache and the way it operates. It actually was our source of inspiration for us to organize the foundation. All the work done in the foundation is voluntary. No one is remunerated. In the past, we did have an executive director, but since we don't have as many sponsors as before, we had to dismiss him. So we now work on the basis of voluntary work only. Obviously, it has pros and cons, but we, we manage to, to survive. The mission. Our mission is to support the development of open source software in the geospatial area and to promote its use. Uh, this mission is very similar to that of GVSIG. We want to promote this objective as much as possible. We have a number of aims. Two, uh, number one, to provide projects with resources. And by resources, we mean technical resources, technical infrastructures. At the beginning, it was for projects to have a place to work, for projects to be able to host their code. But we also include other resources, for instance, le legal information concerning licenses and permits. The foundation can eventually hire a solicitor, a lawyer, to clarify certain doubts and queries. Not only that, the foundation is a common brand all the elements in the foundation try to convey a common image, a common brand, so, so that the industry thinks we are a quality foundation. In that respect, we want the industry and the education world to consider us a source of information for their project and a source of resources. We want it to be accessible to everybody. That's why we have uh, access on Linux. 
Um, but we also have other platforms for readily accessible possibilities, also for Windows. And as far as possible, we try to promote the use of standards and open data, free data. The idea is to, to spread our view of open source geospatial software. This is the structure of the foundation, the organization chart. We have a board of directors with nine people. Well, I don't know, but all the information is on Wiki. But our members are all over the world. 80 members have a voting right and there, there are different committees too. In the board, we have nine directors. One of those directors is the chairperson, and the chairperson is invited to events all over the place. Uh, recently in Japan, he was in Japan, Korea, and China. And the board of directors, uh, when there is a serious problem, we come together and think of a solution so we are actually the voice of the foundation when required. But the work is actually done in the intermediate levels. The board of directors meets up once a month, but the daily management and work is done by the committees. There are nine committees, incubation, open data, website maintenance, systems and of course we have foundation projects and local chapters and finally sponsors sponsors uh, give us financial help and we try to have a close relationship with them the projects in the foundation these are just a few we have a lot more but they are big names uh, map servers, map catalogs, libraries, web mapping tools. So we cover the whole range on geospatial technology. The local chapters, they are a voice in a particular language. For instance, the French-speaking chapter, Spanish-speaking chapter, but they could also be chapters for smaller places. In Canada, for instance, there are four local chapters, and it makes sense because it's a huge country, so uh, people can't meet up so easily, and they speak both languages, English and French in Quebec or other cities, so they have their own uh, structure. Some of them have legal status, etc. Right, Spanish-speaking sections or chapters since 2008, we give support in Spanish uh, to our mailing list, a very long mailing list, and we translate documents into Spanish. We try to give advice. We promote open source events. These Spanish-speaking chapters cover the whole of Latin America and Spain. But in the end, we are all together in tiny micro chapters or groups in which we all know each other. We meet up regularly in cities, basically in Barcelona, Madrid, Cantabria, Santander in the north of Spain, Cordoba, Seville, Tenerife, Buenos Aires, Mexico, etc. So these small groups do a number of things. And at the end of the day, we all talk the same language. We all speak the same language. And finally, the last large activity, FOSS4G, which is an international event. It is very, very interesting because it brings together all communities dealing with geospatial open source software. So it's a great meeting point for all of us to get to know each other and present our projects. It's, it's really a good place. This event, however, uh, well, it, it's moved. It has moved all over the, the place, as you can see. But 
uh, it's been broken down into regional events. This year, for instance, we didn't have a conference in Europe, so it was held in, in the US, and next year it will come back to Europe. And there will be one in Buenos Aires, too, in Central Europe this year, too. So these events are very technical, and it's worth attending. Project incubation. A project is incubated by the foundation in this case and promoted to a very high level by the foundation. It's not, it's not just a matter of sending your project. It, it, the project needs to be eligible. It needs to fulfill a number of criteria. It is thoroughly reviewed. And finally, or eventually, the foundation gives the go ahead. The project incubation procedure is based on a committee which analyzes the project, is sees to it that all conditions are met, and that the project is a quality project, well grounded, with uh, good governance. This is a diagram of project incubation. Projects may be escorted by a mentor. If they don't have a mentor, a mentor needs to be find, found. Sorry, um, Mentoring lasts as long as required. And once the mentoring process has been completed, the project is voted upon. If the committee gives their OK, it is then reassessed by, by third parties, by a third party. But usually, this is not the case. The committee studies the project very, very thoroughly and usually gives them their approval. Once the project is approved, then the foundation officially supports the project. Requirements. Typical requirements for a mature project. A project with a sufficiently diverse community. The project needs to be sound, solid, because ultimately the project needs to be stable and survive over time. It should not be a one-person project and eventually vanish or disappear. Divisic. Divisic incubation started in June 2007 in the Victoria Force 4G conference. A meeting was held with the committee. Incubation was approved with uh, Jiro and Tishla as a mentor, and I, I was the contact person. Uh, because I already knew the people in the foundation, and I was working for GVZIC, so it made sense. But at the time, GVZIC did not yet have uh, open version control. In GVZIC Association was set up in 2009, in February, and it was not until June 2009 that the technical government of GVZIC became official and an appoint and a committee was appointed. As you can see, the committee included quite a few people and the CDT was then produced. In September 2009, GVZIC appeared in the first DVD of the foundation as a way of illustrating, illustrating cooperation with the foundation. In April 2010, all infrastructures were migrated onto a European project called Ozor. In April 2010, the blog was published with a much greater uh, display of technical papers and articles. In December 2010, the first developers meeting took place on the occasion of the sixth 
conference. And this is really interesting a practice because it's always nice to meet up with other developers. In December 2010, the CDT committee started to meet regularly and all minutes of meeting started to be published on the internet. In actual fact, you can gain access easily to all those minutes. In February 2011, Planet GVZIG was published with a forum. February 2011, new mailing lists were created for the TSC committee, newsletters, etc. March, dissemination portal with stories of success, of success, marketing initiatives, something which was really needed in open source software um, for uh, April 2011, GVSIC training, a portal for e-learning, May 2011, copyright transfer formalization in such a way that the association keeps their copyright, which is very, very important, particularly if the license needs to be changed in the future, because otherwise you have to ask for permission from all contributors for a license change. January 2012, um, it was not very successful. We had to leave because JoinUp did not comply with the requirements of the project, and so we needed our own infrastructure, one more in line with our needs. And finally, February 2013, I did not have too much time for GVZIG, so the contact, a contact person was appointed in Madrid, Manuel Madrid, sorry. What was left to be done at this point? The review of the mother code uh, obviously, it made no sense to review it for number two, so it was delayed. Publication of the second version took quite a while, and just about uh, two months ago, two months ago, we created the first draft for code revision, which is very good, by the way. A few good things and have been identified. And that's it for the incubation process. It's almost finished. We just need to finalize the review. And now the incubation committee has to ask the questions about what's left for the project to be completed. But in theory, that should be it. It's been a long process. As you can see, many things have happened. The project has grown along the incubation procedure. Slowly but surely, we, we grew based on, on the good practices suggested in the incubation stage or other good things. Uh, as a result of uh, our conferences with the Latin American chapter, the organizers of the conference have made room for attendees from Latin America to meet. Five minutes, Jorge. Mailing lists, Argentina, Russia, Batovi, and a few more. In short, some of these lists of TVZIC are on Osteo mailing lists. So Osteo provides the project with infrastructures. All the files of all TVZIC lists are accessible on NABL or NABL. And from there, you can browse all the mailing lists right from the very beginning of the project. In fact, I use them to prepare this presentation because if everything, everything is there. More recently, the accessory handler downloads plugins and a mirror has been created for downloads on OSGEO Foundation for downloading to be faster. And finally, blogs. The blogs have been aggregated on the foundation's aggregator. To finish with, 
um, live DVD. Live DVD is a DVD uh, which includes different packages, different softwares, including GV, GVZIC, uh, without having to install it. And finally, in the on the DVD, there is a package for installation which includes educational resources, which are very nice and in a number of languages. Conclusions, OSGEO and GVZIG share goals, share objectives, so it only makes sense for GVZIG to come to the foundation. Incubation of GVZIG has been a long process. It's taken quite a few years, but it's been very educational, very constructive. GVZIG is a huge project and very different from, from other projects, so it's really nice for large projects to be members on OSGEO. Incubation is about to finish, about to finish, sorry, it's coming to an end, and collaboration needs to be taken care of. Let me tell you a little story. In the FOSS 4G meeting this year in Nottingham, I had dinner before the opening day with a representative of the incubation committee. And over dinner, we managed to do so many things because when you are face to face, you have a huge opportunity, a great chance to understand things a lot better to understand intentions, and it was very nice, very friendly. Um, so over dinner, we came up with the draft for the code review. And I think that's it from me. Thank you. Thank you very much. For, for your presentation, and if anybody wants uh, to ask a question, uh, this is the best time to do it. Bueno, por ver si se anima alguien, yo, salvo que me lo haya saltado. Uh, if anybody uh, would uh, like uh, uh, to say something, there is a practical issue, which is uh, how somebody can. Uh, uh, incorporate uh, to some of the local chapters uh, uh, when you get uh, close uh, thanks uh, to uh, and uh, uh, to uh, uh, thanks uh, uh, to the mail uh, lists uh, you can do the mail lists uh, and uh, you can uh, introduce yourself you you can say I'm uh, uh, so and so and I work at that place and I need uh, Sponsors sometimes uh, just in this way uh, you can find people from your city or they can tell you about uh, uh, others which are in your city uh, and uh, um, in a, a few uh, days time uh, 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 we uh, are going to meet uh, uh, to um, discuss some things and have a beer so just uh, in, in this very simple way. Um. Anybody else? Uh, think